Oregon State hiring Damon Wilson was a much needed hire for them. You see, MEAC football is a different kind of brand of football. It's physical, right? It's it's doggy dog. Like it's you know, like every day it's a battle and it's a gauntlet that you you might or might not make it out of, no matter how talented you are. And I feel like Morgan State under Tyrone Whitley, Wheatley, he was he just wasn't getting the job done and he was kind of bringing that bringing that down a little bit. No no disrespect to Coach Tyrone, um, but I mean in your tenure you do go. What was it? Five and thirteen, I believe, and three and ten against the Miak or something like that. Um, so you know, it just wasn't it wasn't working out. So with coach, with Coach Wilson from Bowie State, now you get a guy who's gone eighty nine and forty five in his career at Bowie. Right now you get a guy who's been to seven CIAA championships and have won the last three of them. You get a guy who who really just needed a better opportunity, right? Because now with better facilities, now in at the Division I level, he's going to take those impact players that he's, he's developed from the Division II level who are in the transfer portal now, like one of them being the corner, I forget his name, but I know he was defensive player of the year. I think he actually led the league in interceptions. You know, so, I, you know, he's in the transfer portal. His best uh, edge rusher is in the transfer portal and another kid as well from Bowie. And I think he's going to take some of those impact players Right, bring them to Morgan and start to build his winning culture at Morgan State. Will it be easy? No, it will not. But I really do believe that if Morgan State was able to get a little momentum going in the recruiting trail, how, like how they did under Wheatley by uh, being so close into pulling off that three-star uh, weapon out of New Jersey, who go, also goes by the name of Kobe, right? They were close to pulling him off. I think the number one Juco quarterback in the country, they were able to get a visit from him. Um, so, you know, if... if the fact that they were able to get that little bit of juice going in the recruiting trail under Coach Wheatley, I think with Coach, with Coach Damon, I think they'll be just that much better. Now, we know what he was able to do at the Division II level, recruiting-wise. It's going to be that much harder at the Division I level. It's, it's going to be. And that's going to be a challenge for him. One that I think that he will be okay in, but it is going to be a challenge for him. By the way, guys, I sound different because I am sick, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, but, you know, just bear with me. So, Coach Wilson, he's going to face challenges because this is the MEAC, right? And we know... All of, the, all of the news lines surrounding the MEAC and how schools have been leaving and how the question of the conference, well, the conference itself was in question um, and how long it'll be, how long they'll stay afloat. But, you know, they look like they're committed to each other right now. So, you know, we'll just have to see on that. But he's coming into a conference where Delaware State is not going to give it up easily. South Carolina State is just getting their bearings, right? Right, they're, they're really just... They've always been in contention, like to be that top team out of the MEAC. They've always been right there with North Carolina a t but now it's their time. They're not going to look to give that up easily. He knows that, right? So you got those two schools, North Carolina uh, and North Carolina a t They've left, so now North Carolina Central is now on the up and up. You feel me? Norfolk. Norfolk is still is looking to get to the celebration bowl. This isn't going to be an easy thing for him by any means, by any stretch of the imagination. But if there's anybody who I think that can do it, it is him. Coaches like that who are able to build a winning uh, a winning team and a winning a program at a lower level, I think those are the type of coaches who you bring up because all they need is a little bit better facilities and you know a little bit bigger budget to really show what they can do. So very happy for Coach Wilson. I think this is much needed for Wilson. Honestly, I was one of those guys who always assumed that Morgan State would need a celebrity coach, like kind of like what Jackson State has to come over and change things for them. As a matter of fact, you know, I think Jeff Lightsey was the first one to point this out. Uh, shout out to Jeff Lightsey. Uh, he, I think he was the, uh, the one of the first ones to call for Ray Lewis to Morgan State, right? And I was all with that. I actually loved that idea. But 
them hiring Coach Wilson, nonetheless, great pickup for me. Um, it is going to be interesting to see if he can get those kids out of the transfer portal for me. It'll also be interesting to see where they finish next season. I'm not expecting them to finish number one and number two, but it's going to be interesting to see how how well they play next year, the quality stand, uh, brand of football that they'll play next season. Also, you can't forget Howard with their recruiting class this year. They're starting to look on the up and up as well. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how he can come in and get Morgan State ready to go. It's 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 very interesting, right? Like this is this is uh one of the few one of the few headlines in HBCU football that doesn't get enough attention. It's gotten attention, but it doesn't get enough attention because it's Morgan State. But this is a really interesting topic. A really interesting topic because you know, the MEAC in all its glory, right? Without all of the cameras and the attention, they've been dominant versus the swag. Overall, I just cannot wait to see how Coach Wilson finishes the year with Morgan State. You know, it, it's not going to be easy for him by any stretch of the imagination, but a coach of his caliber with a bigger budget, uh, with a little better, I don't know the facilities of Morgan compared to Bowie, but I'm willing to bet it's it's better. Um, just because the Division II level, the Division I level, but I could be wrong. But, you know, a, a coach of his magnitude coming up and getting his opportunity, I don't think he's going to squander this. I, I don't. I just think I think it's going to take a little bit of time, but he's going to build a winning culture at Morgan, and I'm so excited for them because there's no other, there's no school who is more deserving in the MEAC at least uh, than Morgan State. So I can't wait to see how this happens. I can't wait to see the brand of football that they play next season because they aren't going to finish first. They aren't going to finish second, not even third, if I'm being honest with you. But the brand of football they play is going to tell me whether this hire is good or not, right? So we we, we have time to, to figure that out. Uh, but with that being said, man, you're watching the CFL Podcast. I go by the name of Kobe. I'm out.